Okay. Well, good morning, everybody. I'm Benson Medina, district trainer. We're on uh, another uh, Saturday session uh, of our uh, district uh, training and presentation. So today, uh, we're really fortunate to have uh, past district governor and Polio Plus chair, Roz Cooper, to do our presentation this morning. Take it away, Roz. Thanks, Benson. I was getting ready for like a three hour dissertation, but that's fine. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome. Thanks for coming this Saturday morning, which looks like it's beautiful outside. So I'm happy that you're coming with us and we're going to be discussing something that's near and dear, I'm sure, to all of our hearts. And that's making sure we end polio now. So um, I'm sure we've heard a lot of we've gotten a lot of information about what polio is and the virus. And I hope today when we get into the discussion portion of it, you um, bring up any issues that that's concerning you about our in polio day events or about eradicating polio or what the maybe the end Raj, you got muted, um, so you have to unmute yourself. Sorry. Go ahead. Do I start over again? How much did you? <laughs> no, no, no we, you're good. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, as we got, as we know about polio, it's a potentially fatal disease. It could be it causes paralysis and it strikes predominantly children under five. But that's not to say that that's everyone. And we know, of course, that it can be prevented by vaccines. Although it's not curable, it can be prevented. It, it, it's not curable. And unlike most diseases that we have, and when we look at the pandemic that's going around now, polio can be eradicated. And, and to me, it takes a lot to do it, but the top priority would be education or understanding that polio can get back to where it was those many, many years ago. Polio Plus, over 30 years, Rotary and his partners have driven the efforts to eradicate polio by vaccinating children. And through the Global Polio Eradication Initiative, Rotary focuses on advocacy, fundraising, volunteer recruitment, and awareness building. And we're going to talk a little bit about that as we go along, about what it entails and what it, it, it was about back then and how we can help with these different, with our different ideas addressing the focus that Rotary had back then. So as Rotarians and Rotary members have contributed over $2.2 billion in volunteer hours, going on in National Immunization Days, helping with uh, testing and sending out flyers and getting ready to go on Immunization Days, but in the process, we have protected nearly 3 billion children in 122 countries. And this advocacy effort has played a major role in government's decision to contribute over $10 billion to what we're doing to eradicate polio. You know, Rotary and his partners in, 1980, in 1988 formed the Global Polio, polio Eradication Initiative. At that time, there were 300 and over 350,000 cases in, in 125 countries every year. Not just one year, two years, but every year, this is what was happening. And today, as we look at it and we understand it, those cases have been reduced by 99.9%. .9%. With only the two countries remaining, and we've heard so much about those two countries, we just wish they would go away, Afghanistan and Pakistan. I remember back when we were first talking about polio many years ago when I was governor, we would say polio is this close, <laughs> this close. But now it's closer than this close. It is so close, 99.9% .9 close. And that's a major, major accomplishment that we've had. And we've had that um, because of the efforts of people like you and Rotary and raising the funds that we need and uh, addressing the infrastructure and understanding what it's about. And because of those efforts, the, the methods that we're using or the infrastructure that we're using 
is also being looked at for other diseases, including that of COVID-19. So we're working to get, if we do this, I feel like if we do this, then if we have another pandemic outbreak, then it would maybe be more controllable than what it is now with us in the world today. The, the uh, Polio Eradication Initiative, as I said before, was formed in 1988. And it, it is composed of the World Health Organization, Gavi, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, UNICEF, CDC, and of course, Rotary. And even with that and the contribution and support that we get from the governments from all over, we still have many, many, many challenges. And those challenges are sometimes progress defeating. Afghanistan and Pakistan have their challenges now, but it's not the first time we've faced challenging, challenges in trying to eradicate polio. If you remember back when, when we were trying to go on a national immunization days, and the countries would not let us in because they thought we were sterilizing the children or we were doing things that was not to the interest of their beliefs or their religion or what they feel or how they live. So we've always had, had challenges within Rotary, but we've overcome them. And just like we've done then, we are going to do the same with Afghanistan and Pakistan. I'm comfortable and comfortable. Uh, I know it's going to happen. And that's the positiveness I think we all need to have as we go forward and try to uh, eradicate this disease and, and get rid of this polio that a virus forever. And we can do this with the sufficient resources and our commitment, continued commitment, because we do, we give a lot of our time and our efforts. And I think that's why we every year on the 24th of October, in addition to the fact that it's the birthday of Jonah Salk, I think this is why we celebrate Rotary that time, because we celebrate the accomplishments we've had, and we celebrate the ways and the ideas that we're going to have in combating this disease. And that's what we're looking forward to coming up next week, celebrating that, those ideas and accomplishments. But in order to ensure success, we, we have to raise funds. That's the bottom line. We talked about advocacy, but fundraising is one of the bottom lines in getting to where we want to be. And every year for the past few years, Rotary has a $5 million challenge that is offered to all of us in Rotary. And that's matched as we know, two to one by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And at the end of the year, if we meet that challenge, we are awarded $150 million. And that provides so much needed operational support in what we are looking for and what we need to do and where we need to be to eradicate this, this virus and keep our world free and keep our promise to the children of the world of a polio-free world. So Rotary in action, all of us, when you look around, we are Rotarians in, in actions. We are Rotary in actions. We have more than 100, 1 million Rotarian who have donated time and money and efforts and insight and, and their, their expertise in trying to end polio and how we can vaccinate all the children and make them comfortable, make the moms and the dads and the parents comfortable that what we're doing is for the betterment of their kids and for that of everybody around them. So when we work, work with UNICEF and other partners, to this, we need to distribute this information and this materials. And we're gonna talk about some of the materials that we have in our district here that we're using and the fun ways we are addressing our in polio uh, activities going on and mobilizing and recruiting fellow volunteers. It's been an issue in Afghanistan and Pakistan. It has not stopped our efforts. Rotary is never gonna send any volunteer or anyone in any area where there's conflict or danger of loss of life or health issues. So we do have ways that we're working around that by using on the ground volunteers. 
And those volunteers, basically women now, are going from place to place and make it. And the most important thing they can do as they go and inoculate the children and educate the families is to keep a record of the children that have been vaccinated so that we catch everybody and do what we have to do. And this is, um, we have a, a I, would, I wanna say a cadre of celebrities. I consider each one of you here a celebrity of Rotary because you keep giving, you don't stop. But we have outside people, outside of Rotary who continue to support our efforts and what we are doing to eradicate polio. And I have some of these names in the list. I was gonna put one by one by one by one, but I decided no. But if you look at the list, influential people who, whose words can go out and can assist in the efforts that we have. And uh, the list just goes on and on and on. And I'm just amazed at the volunteers of the support that we're getting from people outside of Rotary. What would be nice if all of these supporters were to become Rotarians. That would be great in our efforts to eradicate polio. That would be great in our membership efforts because when we look at this list of people, we see people who inspire us, people who are trailblazers and people who would make great Rotarians. So if you see one of these people on the street, ask them to join Rotary. <laughs> and this year we're looking at one day, one focus in ending polio. We wanna be a part of history. You can be a part of history. Actually, you are a part of history. And when we donate your time as you're doing now, you're here, you're learning, you're sharing your ideas, you're putting it all together. And all of this is an effort to end this disease. We can't do it one by one. We can do it as a group together. We can do anything we put our minds to. And that's why we get together, have these, these trainings that we have so that we're more, um, more apt to understand what's going on and to influence or attract others into what we're doing. We're being a part of history. We are making history right now because we are 99.9% .9 close to it. And that is so close that we aren't gonna stop. What also is needed in being a part of history is donating our funds, support to the Rotary Foundation, support to In Polio Now, support to Polio Plus Society. We do that. We do a good job at, of doing that. And this year, our last year, when they introduced the Polio Plus Society, it was, um, it was almost too easy to do $100 a year. $100 a year. And when I talk to people now, they say, hey, that's like two cups of coffee. Well, that's a year. Two cups of coffee would cost that much in a week, probably. But we can do this and we can put our efforts to it. The, problem we have with this now is let, getting people to understand what it's about, that it's not $100 a week, and it's not $100 a month. Those are the questions I'm being asked. It's not. When we donate our funds, we need to understand and appreciate where those funds are going. And if we do that and we get there, we are going to reach our goals of eradicating polio. And then donate your voice. Talk about Rotary. Let people know what we are and what we do. Wear your in polio now shirts, wear your pins, wear your little thingy, you know, like that. Do these kinds of things to show people who you are because number one, they are question getters. They see you and they want to know, hey, what is that? And how do I get one? And you can get one by becoming number one, a Rotarian. And number two, by supporting the, the, the projects that we have, supporting World, a Polio Plus society. We need to get involved and spread the message and talk. Just talk to people that we run into. And also, we want to host an event. Now, events are the best way to put our brand and what we're doing out there. So we want to host a viewing party, host a concert. And I tell you, we have one that's going to be sponsored. It's Maddie Wong from the Rotary Club of West Honolulu. He has uh, created, a, and I'm going to encourage you to do this. He has created, created a Raise for Rotary page. And he's out soliciting support 
He's going to have a concert, and we're going to have a, hear more from Maddie next week during World Polio Day. But it's a great idea. One person can start and make a difference, and this is what he's doing. He's got a group, he's got a band, and he's going to donate and contribute what was coming in for that to in polio. And then you want to support the uh, do a bike ride. We have a Rotarian from the Honolulu Bay Rotary Club who is going to do the Tour de Tour de Tucson Tucson bike ride. And I'm not sure if he's on the call today, but he will be with us on the 24th next week to talk about his efforts in fundraising. He has also created a page in the Race for Rotary to support those efforts. And that page is going like wildfire. If you haven't visited a Race for Rotary, we have created a page under Rotary District 5000. So go in and look at what's out there. And it's like a shopping cart. When I went through, I said, oh, I want one of these. I want one of these. I want to give to this one. I want to give to that one. And you can do it because you're not, they're not asking a lot. They're asking for a contribution because contributions multiply and they help and they get the, the word out. And we've also had events like pineapple carving. What a neat novel idea this is. You just make a contribution or a donation and you get a pineapple and you carve it. And they have a contest. This is the Echo Rotary Club, I do believe. And it's so, so ingenious. These are the kind of ideas we look at that anyone can participate in and anyone can do. I wanna do that too. I don't know how to carve a pineapple, but I'm willing to try it. We carve pumpkins, we carve whatever. <laughs> so. That's a neat, neat, very original idea. And that's what it's about. And then the mini golf tournament that's being put on in Kauai, uh, on, in a, at Poipu Beach is sponsoring. This is, this is a novel idea with the funds that's raised from that going to in the, the uh, Polio Plus Society. Ideas that you have to have fun doing and creating and making the contributions. And then this, I think, is about the third year, if I'm not mistaken, the second or the third year, where you support a local restaurant. You go out and you buy a sandwich or you buy what they have, and then the percentage of that goes to Polio Plus Society. And this also is a way of promoting that local business, promoting that environment. So we need to do more of this, and it's so easy to do. And this is Sonia of the Westport Harbor Club, and she's going to speak with us next week on the 24th about this one, too. We're going to have all of our fundraisers that's being identified give a couple of minutes on their fundraiser and what they're doing and how we can support them. So if you're online and you have a fundraiser you'd like to promote, please send me the information, and we'll make sure that you're you're on the agenda to talk about it. And then what we want to do too is to register the event that we have. We want to register it so we can let people know what we are doing in Rotary. Now, over the years, it's been interesting uh, the way that P Rotary events have gotten out. And I think from the past, you've seen this, the In Polio, no, In Polio Now banners that's been all over. They've even been planes going up with a banner on the side and, and cars and buses and any kind of information we can get out and let people know we are trying to end polio. And the interesting thing about this information going out is that it's by age group. If you look at your kids and your grandkids and your great grandkids, they don't know a lot about polio because in their life, polio didn't exist because of Rotary, but they need to understand that polio does exist. And until we get rid of that virus, it can come back and infect the US. It's only a plane right away. We need to eradicate it, we need to stop it, but we need to educate our kids that take, have your kids take the vaccine have them inoculated against polio. We're always talking right now about the, um, the uh, pandemic, COVID-19, and all the, the conversation going back and forth about that. 
but we should not forget about what could happen if we forget about polio and the fact that that virus is still out there and we need to do whatever we can to eradicate it. And then advertise it. You know, the big, the world's biggest commercial, just get together. This is so simple because this Zoom meetings all put together. And we can do something like that and be a part of something like that and show the people we work with or the people in our neighborhood or the people you come in contact all the time that this is what we're doing to eradicate polio. And I guarantee you, they're, one, they're gonna ask one of two questions. What is polio? Uh, how do we help? It's a great way to get out what we're doing and we shouldn't stop. Then we wanna register the events too. And as I said, let everybody know what we're doing here. And these, what we've looked at so far has been a lot of creative, creative ideas that doesn't cost a lot to do, but we'll bring in the questions and the support and the funds that we need to end polio now. And your gift would do so many, so many wonderful things. There are five reasons why we must eradicate polio. Your gift will improve lives. As it says to, in the, the slide, 19 million people who would otherwise have been paralyzed are walking today. And the 1.5 million people who would have been dead or who would have died are alive. And it's all because we are taking the initiative to eradicate polio and making the gift of life, the continuation of life there for everyone. It's a, gift, it's a gift to invest in the future. When you invest in the future, we know the children will grow up healthy, strong, able to do the things that they would not have or their parents couldn't do or their grandparents couldn't do when they were growing up. And that all makes for a healthier world in which we live. And it's gonna improve child health. The Polio Surveillance Network and Vaccination Campaign monitors children and other health problems that, problems that they may have. And it's a way that we keep tab, you keep tabs on everything that's going on so that those problems can be addressed and those issues can be taken care of. So that's the gift to improve our children's health and health care costs how we can save money when we eradicate polio, why we must do it in health benefits that we have. And your gift will make history. When we eradicate polio, the second greatest public health achievement, second to smallpox. And we are on the road to doing that. We are well on our way. And it's gonna, the continuation of it is gonna depend on you. And we need to keep going. We need to understand what this fight is all about. And it's a fact. At the end of the 1980s, more than 50,000 children were polio by polio, were paralyzed by polio. And today, there is that 99.9%. .9%. One day, one day it's going to be 100%. I'm com confident of that. It's going to happen. Also, until we see that last case, that last child, that last polio virus eradicated, we're not done. What we need to do there is to immunize, improve, and hire. We need to keep immunizing the children, immunizing the children against polio. We need to do this until the virus is gone, three years, three years gone, to make sure it's not there. We need to improve our surveillance tactics and mechanisms to detect the polio virus in, in environments, Afghanistan and Pakistan. We need to make sure that we know where the viruses are and we are taking the steps that we need to eradicate the virus and to hire the health workers that we need that are going door to door to make sure we find every child and we vaccinate every child. I had a call a couple of weeks ago by someone in, uh, from a Rotary Club in Florida wanting to know more about the purple pinking. 
you know, as we know, the purple pinky is the dye that's put on the child's pinky to let others know that this child has been vaccinated. And each year when you go, that child has uh, that purple dye put on the pinky and they're so proud of it. They're so proud of it. And if they could, I'm sure they would have that same purple dye on their fingers the every year you go. But in 365 days, it sort of wears off. But these are the things that we need to do and the, the bringing it in, for, in our forefront about the polio virus. So how do we as Rotarians do this? We do it through our fundraising efforts as I've talked about previously. We are going to carve pineapples. We're going to have golf tournaments. We're gonna to have concerts. We're gonna support our local businesses. We're going to figure ways and promote Raise for Rotary ideas that everybody in our district can participate in. I want everybody to visit the Raise for Rotary and decide which or how many of the activities, fundraising activities out there they want to support. And we want to be in advocacy with various, or, various organizations. It's kind of hard now with the pandemic, but it's getting better, I understand. We're going to be able to go more places and do more things and talk to more people. And this is what we want to do and we advocate for ending polio. But the biggest thing we need to advocate for is education and teaching our future generation, other generations coming what polio is and how to protect their children and the children of the future. And we need to more than anything, keep polio eradication high on our priority list. We need to eradicate polio. We have to get this job done. We must, we can't stop. It's been asked several times, why don't we identify another program uh, that we're going to do when polio is eradicated? But generally, when you have something like that, you have the, the mentality or the mindset of people going, okay, I'm, I've supported this already. I'm going to support this one now because we're almost there with the old one. If that's our mind and that's what we think, we're never going to eradicate polio. So Rotary International and the Rotary Foundation, they're not going to identify a project right now. They're going to keep you guessing. And we do have good guests like water, uh, like disease control, like so many things that we can help in the world. But right now, our major focus and our major concern is eradicating polio. And that should stay top of mind with us. Another is, is the raising awareness of the, the value and the benefits of vaccinations. And that's what we do when we spread the word. And we need to talk about finishing the jobs. But we need to address right now, hitting that $50 million mark by the end of the year so we can get the two to one match by the Rotary Foundation. So keep that dear and near to your heart because we want that match. And we can only get that if we raise, if we hit that $50 million goal that was set for us. And volunteer engagements. Engagements like the projects that we're having, they do a concert. All of the, the ideas that we're putting together are ways that we can get our initiative, our actions, our support, what we believe in, what's good, what's healthy, what's right out to everybody around us. And then, and then we're going to get together on the 24th next Sunday at 9, and we're going to celebrate World Polio Day. And I say celebrate because that's when we're going to come together and we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about what we've done so far and what we want to do heading toward that 25th of October and into the future. These are the things that we're gonna promote and that we're gonna look at. We're a polio day. I hope you put it on your calendar and I hope you can make it. I'll, we have great speakers. This is a senior program officer on the polio team, Apuva Malia. And I need to thank Kathy from the Rotary Club of Mililani for introducing him to us in Rotary District 5000. She's gonna be on the program on Saturday to introduce Apuva. And he, his major focus is Afghanistan and Pakistan. And those two countries are his main focus. So he's got a lot of information to share and he has, he's open for any kind of questions you may have. 
So please plan to attend, bring your friends, and let's find out what's going on with Afghanistan and how we are making inroads there and the real obstacles that we are facing trying to get that 99.9% God, make it go away. And then we're gonna have past Rotary International President John Germ. He was president in 2016, 17, but he more importantly, he is the chair of the End Polio Now Countdown to Success campaign. He is countdown to history. John Germs, as long as I've known him, which has been quite a long time, his focus has always been on ending polio and polio eradication. He's very dynamic, very easygoing speaker, and he's gonna address the, what's going on from the foundation point of view and the, the, the challenges we're facing and what we're doing to overcome it. So you need, please come out and, and listen to this and, and hear what he has to say and get a better idea, better picture on where we are in our polio eradication uh, efforts. This is from two experts in the field and we're really happy to do that. And I would be remiss if I didn't talk to you for a second about the Polio Plus Society. If you're not a member of the society, there is a pledge form that I'm gonna have placed in, I think Sharon's here, uh, or Anne-Marie, please place the link in the chat and we're gonna join up, join today, fill out the pledge form, but understand questions I've been getting about this. There's a difference between the pledge form and the donation form. When you do the pledge form, you're just pledging your commitment to be a member of the Polio Plus Society every year until the uh, virus has been completely uh, gone and the world is declared polio free. That's just a commitment form and we track that. And then you go using the pledge form uh, link at the bottom and you can go to the Polio Plus Society donate page. And this is where you enter the information for your, your contribution. If you were to do one without the other, it's fine. We're gonna take care of it for you. So if you do the Polio Plus contribution form and you haven't done the the uh, membership form into the, the society, just let me know. The only way right now we can track your contributions to the, the uh, foundation is you're letting us know that you made a contribution on this day and this amount. That's all you have to do is just send me an email to that effect and we'll track it that way. As far as the Polio Plus Society membership form goes, once you sign that pledge and submit it, that comes straight to us and we can see that information. So please, if you do, uh, several questions I had asked this week is that they're not on the Polio Plus Society, they're not in the society, but they've made the contribution. And it's so simple to do, just complete the form and submit it. If you've completed the form and submitted it and you haven't made your contribution, just make the contribution as you would any, any other way and just let us know. Now, understandably, the Rotary Foundation is behind on a lot of their paperwork and a lot of their reports. Because of the pandemic, they have most of their people teleworking from home and most of their records are being updated, but not quite there yet. And they have made a commitment to try to get this done and try to get it uh, together by the end of, October, no later than the end of October. So they're working on that to make sure that the, the uh, accountability, the accountability is there, but making sure that it shows on the reports. If, uh, if you have any questions at all, just send me an email. If you're unsure if you made the contribution, just send an email. I am hopeful that in the future, there will be, uh, uh, place on the polio report that says contributions to the Polio Plus Society or the fact that you're a Polio Plus Society member. We went through this with the Power Harris Fellow, a Power Harris Society uh, before, and Rotary made the adjustments and took care of that. So hopefully, hopefully in the near future that this is going to come out on the report. So it's gonna be tracked for you and you'll see exactly where you are. And then when you join the Polio Plus Society, you receive your nifty little kit, a certificate, 
a pen that says Polio Plus Society, somewhat like the ones that all of us on the call are wearing, everybody on the call <laughs> wearing their Polio Plus Society pin, and then your bracelet, your in polio now bracelet that says, hey, I'm a member of the Polio Plus Society. And it, I saw Sandy's bracelet in the air. <laughs> so we are Polio Plus Society members. And Rick, I, Rich, I know you are. So I know you have your bracelet on. Don't say no. But, <laughs> but anyway, this is the recognition that we have. And then if David Monstrad is on, I'd like for him to say a few words about, and I know David, this is kind of catching you a little bit off, but about the, the additional program that we in District 5000 are creating that's going to be a, a lot like the Triple Crown program. Dave, are you on? We'll give him a minute or two. Okay. I see something. In the chat, um, Sonia, you had some information out there. Would you like to share that with us? Sure. Uh, about our buy a meal, donate a meal, support local restaurants. It is now active. We are going to launch digital tickets. So Great. all you need to do is send an email to our club president, Raji Buxit. And his email is in the chat, Raji, R-O-D-G-I-E at hawaii.edu. Send him an email and let him know how many tickets you'd like. And he's going to email you back a ticket with a number. And you can either go to Fa Waipahu or you can decide to donate it. Let's say if you don't want to take the drive all the way from East Honolulu to Waipahu, you can just tell Raji, donate my ticket to Waipahu Interact Club because you know how those kids are always hungry and those, <laughs> those sandwiches are big. They're, you know, huge sandwiches. So one sandwich will at least feed two kids. Oh, great. Thanks, Sonia. I want one, but you told me I had to get shoe. And yes. I also see in, in, the, in the chat, Nathan Cam from downtown Rotary. Nathan, are you there? You're, you're saying you're finalizing details for a fundraiser with the, the Pizza Press in Pearl City. You want to tell yeah. us a little bit, a little, take a minute, minute or so and tell sure. us about that. And if you're willing to tell us more on next Sunday, that would be great as well. So, so this is all still coming together on the fly. Um, we're a little late in getting to the game of planning, but uh, I, I hope better late than never. Um, so in our club meeting yesterday, um, we decided that we would pursue a pizzas uh, to end polio sort of concept. So trying to play off the peas. Um, and so we've, we've secured pizza press uh, for Sunday, October 24th. Um, they're gonna open up the restaurant a little early for us before their normal business hours from nine to 11. So I understand that'll kind of fall into the pocket in time where um, uh, any presentations or anything like that will be uh, going on. So uh, we have permission to bring up to, or have it up to 70 people in that venue. So we'll try to fill that space. And then we'll also be able to take advantage of any other um, sales that go in through the restaurant for the remainder of that day till closing. So uh, their fundraising uh, policy or their fundraising give back is about 15, is 15 percent of the sales. No, so, that's um, great information. Thank you. That's from 9 to 11 on Sunday. Correct. So zoom in with us Absolutely. and share that with us. You can do that. But this is a great fundraising effort as well. Will so do. thank you for that. And we're, uh, if you email me more information on it, I'll make sure that we have that to publish as well. I will. I will. Hopefully have it all done by Monday. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. And I know we've got Ron out from Poipu Beach, and he has the mini golf tournament. Ron, are you there still? And in note section, type in polio. Mahalo. Okay. Ron Mabry, okay. And who else do we have? If you have any, any uh, suggestions of what your clubs are doing, but I encourage you to uh, share that information also in Raise for Rotary. 
so that we can have one receptacle or one means that we're using to go out and look at all the fundraisers. And if you need help putting it in, just send it to me and I'll make sure we get, if we get that information in. And I see Sharon from Hilo, beer and wine. Sharon, would you like to tell us, take a minute or so and tell us about that? Yes, our Rotary Club is having our 20th annual Oktoberfest the day before the World Polio Day. And we're doing it virtually. So you order your you order your food and your beer and wine and drive by and pick it up. And then we have a program that night. And um, uh, money from each ticket will be donated to Polio Plus. And it says that on the ticket. And it says that in all the advertising that we're doing. Thank you. Yes, I've heard about that's your Oktoberfest. It is uh, your annual event, which is, I'm glad you're still having it and you're doing it despite this pandemic. And then yes. I see Naomi has put in the chat also that you can create a team on Rotary Fundraising Platform. The, the platform is there, it's been created already, but just go and add your team to it so that we can support you and we can support more than one venue. It's not a problem. It's a great way to get the information out there. Okay. So what the final analysis of what we're trying to do is we want to end polio. And my biggest thing with this is that we want to end polio now. We, uh, we've done a lot. We've gone through a lot. And I think the children of the world need that reassurance that their children will not, will not have to worry about polio in the future, that we are going to end polio. We're going to work to have um, the mechanism to say goodbye to polio. And as we say goodbye to polio, we know that it's thanks to you. It's thanks to you as Rotarians. We can't do this. None of this would have been done without you as Rotarians. You are the catalyst behind everything that we do. Membership, foundation support in polio now. Every attempt, every project, we can't do it without you as Rotarians and the, the power or the impact that you bring with your support. And a lot of times it's not all about money but the money helps. It helps in getting things done. Give your time, give your talents, give your, your, your treasure, support the foundation, support in polio now. Are there any questions about anything? Anyone? Raj. Yes. I have a comment I'd like to make. Rich Corson. Hi, Rich. Hi. Uh, oh, and I'm wearing my wristband, by the way. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> but I think what we don't get out uh, the word about as much as we really should is that really anyone can be a member of the Polio Plus Society. You don't have to be a Rotarian. Any one of your family, friends, whomever can join the Polio Plus Society also. So that is a area of um, information that needs to be disseminated so that we have more people joining the Polio Plus Society. We only have maybe one or two people who are non-Rotarians right now who are members of the society, but anyone could be a member. And so those people who may have the passion within them also to join, who aren't Rotarians, do not have to join Rotary to be a Polio Plus Society member. And thanks, Rich. And that is why it's so important that we get the word out and we let people know who we are and what we are. And you will be amazed, as Rich says, that the people who would be a part of this, this uh, society, we even have one interact club that's a part of the Rotary, um, that part of the Polio Plus Society. Wouldn't it be great if we can get our interact clubs to be members of the society? That would be such a great idea. And I think a lot of our, our clubs have interact clubs, just surface that idea with them and sign them up as a Polio Plus Society member, the Rotaract Club of whoever they are. And look at our Rot Rotaract Clubs as well. They also can be, be, uh, become parts of the Polio Plus Society. It's wide open. The thing that we need to do 
is share our voice, get the information out, let people know, invite them to your fundraisers and let them see what you're doing. And you'll be amazed at the people who want to, to be a part of that, who want to participate, who want to contribute, especially the young children. They may not understand polio because they haven't lived it, but they will understand what from the presentations and the talks that we have, how they, how they are lucky and lucky in the fact that Rotary had had this vaccine that could eradicate or save people a long time ago. And their parents administered that vaccine. I had that vaccine administered to them every year. So this is the information that we need to share where we share our voices, share our information and spread Rotary outside of the doors of our Rotary clubs. Share it in your office. Share to the interactors and road directors. Thanks, Rich. Great comment. Anyone else? The Polio Plus Pledge Form, uh, Polio Plus Society Pledge Form is on the chat now, too. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Comments? Okay. I have a if, comment. Yes, ma'am. Well, so what, what I had put in the chat was, you know, um, what Rich was saying, how you do not need to be a Rotarian to belong to the Polio Plus Society. And I thought, what a nice way to give a gift to someone that you really care about to make them a, a society member. Like, for example, you know how every year we tend to give our family members a gift or, or the whole family? a gift and every year we do the same thing over and over and over and as we get older we find that we don't want stuff anymore you know so i think that's a really lovely way that you can honor a, a family and and let them also feel that they're doing something really great by making them a member of the po polio plus society and they can either choose to Continue. continue it on yeah. their own every year or if they don't that's their christmas gift the next year <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna spend the money anyway i mean you know every year we spend hundreds thousands of dollars on christmas gifts to our family members and our friends every year you know so it's going to be like guess what everybody this year we're going to help to end polio how's that <laughs> That's a great idea. We can make stocking stuffers certificates yeah. and stocking yeah. stuffers and put them in our kids' stockings or our spouses or give them as Christmas presents if you have a grab bag yeah. at your in your office. Use that and it's gonna it's gonna make people ask you, Yeah, so what is this about? Right. And if then when, stand, when start we, the conversation, you know. When, when we start the conversation and we tell them about it, the next thing is. Okay, this is how you can join Rotary. <laughs> you can become a member of Rotary. And these are the things that we are doing. So that's a great idea and a great uh, message to take forward as well. Thank you, Sonia. Hey, Roz. Yes. Can Mary. I show the uh, raise.rotary uh, site? Oh, because Mark may... Harbison... uh, Is Mark, Mark is... online? Uh, he just put something in the chat in the chat that he wasn't able to find the donate switch. So let me show you where uh, people can um, form their teams. I think I ended my share, did I? Yeah, you did. Okay. Okay, so the raise.rotary.org is Rotary's uh, platform to get, get donations. So what you're seeing is last year's that Rich Kirsten did and we had 22,000 on World Polio Day. So this is last year's one where we had teams. This one is this year. So you see the um, it's raise.rotary.org slash rotary d5000 slash challenge. So that is for the district. So this is the total for the district and people can either donate now under the, um, the district's umbrella or you can form your own team. So when you form your own team, you just click here, join the team, and it's going to ask you for your title and your name and email address, and you can form your team. So here's one for Metro. Here's one for um, the uh, Matt's concert. So when if you wanted to give to Matt's concert, you click on his, and you can donate now. 
Okay, so this is how you can form your own team for your club, or you can give to one of the uh, ones that are already there. Okay, so this is the um, the the this is the districts umbrella where all the teams will be listed. If you want to create a team, just click the join the create a team. If you want to just join donate now, it's the donate now button. So is that Mark? Is that where you are? Mark, if you now, me, if you click on the donate now, you get a screen, and at the top of the screen, it says, it says, you know, choose your amount, but there's no way to choose your amount. Uh, here, this one. Oh well, see, you got it. I did not get the little boxes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, I may have to log in. Okay. To get it. You have to be sure to choose your country, even though it seems obvious. If you scroll down just a little bit, scroll back up, uh, Naomi, um, or yeah, go to the previous page. Choose your country. You have to choose your yeah, country. You that's have to it. confirm that that's your country. If you don't do that, then I think you oh, won't get the next say, screen. You're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it says United States, so you just click, click the. That test. that is that is that is like. <laughs> it's because no, it's a no brainer. Well, remember right? this is international. <laughs> I hate to say this, but that is typical RI website. <laughs> well, Rot it's... Rotary is international. That's right. And we that's are why. Yeah, Nathan, it's time for you to go in and create your team, oh, so that God. we can we can have pizza, <laughs> and any oh, one okay. of you that have. Uh, a team or you do happen to fundraise, put it in there. We want to be a part of it. We want, that, even though the golfing tournament for um, Poipu Beach is the day before, I think, we may want to support that fundraiser. So put your information out there. And also we have a, a, a and I forgot to mention this, we have a volcano portrait, right, Laura, that Laura is donating that we're going to put in the, um, well, we're going to have next week for someone to take advantage of and make a contribution to the Rotary Foundation and have that portrait. So many things that we're doing. And Dave Monstrin, I see you're here. And I asked earlier if you could tell us a little bit about the Triple Crown for Polio Plus Society. Um, you know, Dave is full of ideas all the time. He has... He has um, the, the Triple Crown that a lot of us are members of, and it's, it's really easy to obtain. So he's going to tell us about another easy one, which probably most of you are there already. So just join it. That's the, the TRF Society, or what we call supporter, the TRF supporter. And that's a new award that we're doing this year. And it is one where someone is giving to um, $100 sustaining to Polio Plus. So they become a Polio Plus member, $100 to the annual fund, and they become a benefactor. And a benefactor is simply a pledge that, you know, that upon your demise, you will basically have $1,000 donated to Polio's um, uh, you know, uh, permanent fund. So the, the fund for um, that constantly is giving because it's only using the interest and not the principal. And so that's the one that keeps giving. So that this particular award is something that can be done by everybody. And it's a, every one of your members can do that. And we're looking for clubs that want to be 100% <laughs> TRF supporters. And uh, there'll be certificates giving, and we're even thinking about some type of banner or something that we could give to the club who becomes a 100% TRF supporter. Dell said he'd, he'd paid for that. So there's no problem. We'll, we'll, we'll get you that banner. <laughs> well, uh, thank you, David. We're also looking for clubs to become 100% po uh, Polio Plus Society members. It's so obtainable, and I think it's going to happen. But more importantly, we want a participation from all 53 clubs in this district 
to at, have at least one or two people as Polio Plus Society members so that we can say that we are 100% support of this district is 100% support of the Polio Plus Society. And this would make your governor quite happy. That's great, Roz. And as, as you know, though, if we all get 100% TRF supporter, then you've got your 100% and pol you know, polio society because that's part of the requirement. So let's go ahead and get everybody let's to be a Paul Harris, um, I mean, sorry, a TRF supporter. And if we get 100% of that, then we've got Rich covered, we've got Roz covered, and we've got an annual giving covered, and we've got the, the endowment fund covered. So there's 100% there. Folks, thank you very much. We've got everybody covered. <laughs> right. that's, that's great. Any other comments or additions to, uh, to what we want to do and how we want to get the word out? Because getting the word out is the most important part of this puzzle. We need to let people know who we are and what we're doing. And those who have been around Rotary for a long time will know that Rotary had always been the best kept secret in the world because Rotarians didn't think that we need to go out and say who we are that our action speaks louder than who we are. But now it's a great idea, and I think it's good for marketing members, is that we let people know who we are and what we do and the projects that we support and the people that we help all around the world. It's not just here in Hawaii, but it's all around the world. I venture to say if we were to canvas what our Rotarians have done, are the, the NIDs, are the uh, international service projects that we work on all over, we'd be amazed at what we've done. So we need to get that word out and we need to uh, start the conversation, start the talking so people can see that. Great comments, anything more? Roz, I'm sure you're going to be sending out um, another email blast to all members about the link for the uh, World Polio Day event on yes, Saturday. We, yes, we will. Yes, okay, we will. awesome. So is Kathy Lum on the line? Kathy, are you here? Paul, is Kathy on the line? She's Ross, not. Uh, she could not make it today. She had a, a previously pre scheduled appointment and she could not get out of it. So she did tell me that she was not gonna be making here. I'll have her um, contact you later on. Today. Okay. Kathy Lum is a new Rotarian to the Rotary Club of Middle Island Sunrise. And she's a Rotarian who has come in swing in the bat. She is, is getting involved. She's listening and she is suggesting projects and like the speaker that we're having today, a friend of a friend of a friend. And we get someone like a Prova to come in and talk to us about what he's doing on a regular everyday basis in Afghanistan and in Pakistan. These are the kind of people Rotary attracts. So I well done to Kathy and she will you meet her more on um, next week, right, Paul? She's gonna be there for the 24th. So she will be introducing a program at that time. And I encourage you to come and to listen to these, these two men speak. We have a whole lot more planned. It's gonna be entertainment, enjoyment, and uh, just a, a good time to share and to fellowship and to have pizza with Nathan and his group. If you guys are having a, an event at the same time and you want to zoom in, zoom it in, zoom the entire environment in. And you don't have to stay the entire time if you'd rather just eat and run, <laughs> but be a part of it next week and, and let's enjoy or pull your day together. I think Rotary Foundation is going, Rotary International is going to be streaming, live streaming an event. I'll get that out to you when we get more information about it. But the advantage of that live stream is that you can see it anytime. So it'll be available to listen to or to look at anytime you have time to do it. Uh, any other comments? I'm looking in the chat and I think we've gone through it. It's a great presentation, Ross. I really, really enjoyed it. Tremendously, and I think it's going to be a wonderful World Polio Day event. I'm really looking forward to that. It's got a good lineup. Totally Exciting. looking forward to it. Dell, do you have anything? Dell's the boss. Dell, you have anything? Uh, nothing other than to say thank you very much for that wonderful presentation, Roz. Thank you, Dell. Even though I think you left the building, <laughs> thank you. 
for, for being, I thank all of you for being here and all of you for participating and uh, sharing your ideas. That's most important to share your ideas about what you're doing. Because if you don't do that, and if we don't see it in Race for Rotary, we don't know what it's about. That there's going to be a, a time, a, a time on um, contributions to Race for Rotary for this event, but it's not going to be a time limit on your support of the Rotary Foundation. You can go to Race for Rotary and support the Rotary Foundation with your contributions that way as well. So. I thank each one of you for sharing your time. I thank you for being here. Sharon, thank you for getting the information out about um, the Polio Plus Society. I really appreciate that. All of your comments, all of your suggestions, all of your support is most appreciated. So we're gonna end this polio thing. We're gonna kick the hell out of polio for sure. And we're gonna do it soon. It's gonna be sooner than soon. So thank you. Uh, DG Sandy, any comments? Yeah, and I too would just like to echo my mahalos. Thank you, Roz, for a wonderful presentation. To the foundation team, and most of all, to all of you in the clubs, the kinds of events that we have coming forward, Maddie's concert, um, the club pizza parties and whatnot, 